two epic Clash of Clans communities collide. Team Forums versus Team Reddit. Who will win? The Forums have won the previous two matchups of this event, so Reddit are out for revenge. And this first attack is a Town Hall 11 versus Town Hall 11 three-star attack by Reddit. So they certainly came out fresh and looking for the victory. This is your recap. I'm your host, Judo Sloth. We have 16 of the best hand-selected attacks. None of mine are in there, but Every single one of the attacks that are will be timestamped down in the description of this video. If you do want to skip ahead, I just quickly want to say a massive thank you to everyone involved. Everyone for setting up this event. There's so much work behind the scenes that goes on. And these guys all did a fantastic job. It was very very fun to take part in. If you missed the official live stream by Supercell as well, that will be linked down in the description of this video as well. And like I said, if you want to skip ahead to any attack, we will have it down timestamp in the description. Starting off here with Team Reddit then, then we'll flip across the forums, back to Reddit, so on and so forth. The first one though, very, very impressive attack here by Steve-O. He's starting out at the very north here with his queen charge. Just a couple of wizards to create that funnel. Then he's going to try and bust his way into the side here. One test wall breaker will come in in just a second. There it is. And then he follows that up in order to break into this compartment. He actually managed to use the rage spell and got in there with that single wall breaker anyway. And then we have some more wizards to create this funnel. And you can see the eagle artillery sitting nicely in the middle there is a beautiful target for the Queen and Grand Warden. So the Queen has them brand new level 5 healers. Came very, very low on health there, but the Grand Warden, just having that in with the Queen not only helps to boost her health, but you kind of get an extra get out of jail for free card. You have the Queen's ability to turn her invisible. That lets the healers heal her back up, but you also have the Grand Warden. Now that she's got that Eagle Artillery, she's also created such a massive funnel at the side of the base there. We have Mass Miners coming right the way through the middle of the base. The King over on the very right hand side of the base takes out all of the trash buildings, and it just means that the Miners here can concentrate on the defenses, because at Town Hall 11, obviously you have so many big and powerful defenses to get through, the Queen just absolutely clutch on this raid. She just goes down there, but it works out quite nicely because the healers transfer across to the Warden, and the Warden then transfers onto the Miners as well, so they get that boost as they are coming through the raid here, and we still have a Rage spell for the back end, so this is where there's still quite a few defenses, but the Queen did such a brilliant job managed to take out one of the Inferno Towers whilst the Miners came through to the other, and then that Rage spell used in this area where we have two Wizard Towers and some other defenses. We do have a Lava Hound in the CC here at Team Forums, but unfortunately that's not really going to do anything to these Miners or Grand Warden. Just the final Wizard Tower at the back end, which could cause a little bit of aggro here for Team Reddit, but with so many Miners left over, unfortunately for here, with us in the forums, it is going to be a Town Hall 11 three-star attack. So that really put Reddit just an extra mile ahead. Such a massive fed to, to try and overcome, but it's always a team effort, guys. So who knows? Team forums have won the first two. Reddit, though, like I said, will be out for revenge. So there we have the first attack. Let's move across to the forums. We actually have a Town Hall 11 attack over at the forums as well. So let's get straight into that attack. The first attack for Team Forums comes from our leader and my good friend, the Great Lack. This was one of the final attacks of the war, and he even has a little special surprise there for Team Reddit. So starting out the attack here, you can see two jump spells allows him access right the way through towards the middle there, where that town hall is situated with all of them defenses around it. Using two golems, the brand new level seven golems, so able to tank that little bit longer for his bowlers here as he pushes them forward. Bowlers right across the side of the map. That will create a nice little funnel, but you can see that he has them quite a bit thicker there in the middle as they move forward. And then it's just a case of using his spells wisely. So he does use rage spells to really help boost them bowlers when they're in such a massive group like that. The damage that they do 
is just incredible. They do start to walk around the side and he does use the rage spell over on the right hand side now because you can see the left hand side there at the bottom. There's a couple of bowlers with the queen but they are starting to thin out. The bowlers here are going to move into the core of the base but we have a surprise there for Team Reddit as well. You can see the birthday boom smashing into that town hall and the bowlers come and finish it off. That gives him the two star attack and it's really just trying to maximize percent from that point. We have a few cleanup troops try to sneak a hog rider in towards this expo but just didn't get it down and then he's able to sneak up a couple of extra percent for that very impressive town hall 11 two star attack birthday boom OP. Back across to Team Reddit, we had two Town Hall 10 versus Town Hall 10 three stars in this event, and it was one for each clan. So we're going to show you them back to back here. We first start out with Reddit, Doc Octothor. Very much a tongue twister there, but he is coming at this base with a lava loon, and what you can see is right in the middle here next to the town hall we have the two inferno towers and not too many of the defenses around it so that is going to be taken advantage of starting out here we're luring the cc it is a lava loon so getting that balloon down is a little bit helpful it wouldn't have really triggered if we're just using the lava loon style troops it needs the heroes in order to trigger it but we're going to take it out anyway that baby dragon very helpful to help keep the queen alive as them lava pups go to town. The queen then moves forward. She's going to take out the air defense at the very north here, then just kind of fizzle out. But from that point, we have control over the base, guys. So you can see, once that air defense goes down, the dock here is going to start the lava loon portion and end up crushing our base so once that's finished you can see that we're bringing the lava hounds to each of the air defense on either side so the reason that one in the north was so important was just so that the lava hounds didn't group up on that first one we're able to get good coverage for the balloons and as they rush through here there's only the two inferno towers in the middle but because they're clumped together we're able to get a freeze spell onto that freeze them both and before you know it they are down to the balloons, so quite the balloon fest here, just flying them all the way forward. Massive balloon parade, and we have the balloons on the back end, which are going to take the rest of the defenses out here with plenty of lava pups with that quad lava loon attack in order to clean up the rest of this base. Now, Town Hall 10v10 has always got to be admired, and on that one, really taking advantage of the fact that the Inferno Towers were in the middle of the base, but let's check out Team Forum's 10v10 3-star. So here it is, guys, one of the best attacks of the war for me by Ricky here at Team Forum's The Bow Witch Attack, starting out on either side here with just a couple of bowlers and the healers, and just notice the air defense. They're sunken into that base just that little bit, and it just means that the healers are going to be protected as the witches and bowlers move around the outside. We then have two jump spells which will provide access right the way through the base here for that main group of bowlers as they move forward. You can see the witches continuing to walk around the outside. They just create the funnel, but we have a massive group down on the south and that is going to be very helpful as they move forward along with this group in the middle where we have the heroes. Now what we're trying to get is them Inferno Towers down as a priority. You can see, again, the healers at the top doing very, very good work for the Boars and Witches, just because them air defense were just that little bit too far into the base, really able to use the healers effectively. You can see the Inferno Tower in the middle here actually stayed up, and that will do a lot of work on the Boars, even clutching onto the healer there at the back, but the Queen steps up and she's gonna smash that down in order to help with this massive group of bowlers. And once you've gone far enough through the base, you don't have to take all of the defenses out on the back end. If your jump spells provide you access right to the far end of the core and you have troops coming around the outside, as long as you can make them survive, with plenty of bowlers protecting and healers to help them alive, then they will come forward at the end in order to take out the defenses on the back end and that is exactly what happened in this attack for Ricky so brilliant Town Hall 10 three star attacks let's move on to a couple of Town Hall 9 attacks then we'll move back up to them higher levels 
The first Town Hall 9 attack for Team Reddit then comes from Goatman, my good friend who just started out his own YouTube channel. Make sure to go and drop by it. The link will be in the description of this video. He's a good friend, guys. Go and check out that channel. But getting into his attack, this is Dragons. Now, you know how much I love the Dragons. I'm a massive fan of them. We have some Town Hall 10v11 attacks coming up later with the Dragons. Very impressive stuff. But for this one, you can see all the air defense pushed to the right hand side of the base here. So a little bit of a kill squad coming in and taking down that area. And notice how he's narrowing the path here as well for the dragons. You need to be able to control the dragons. So since we're pushing into this area of the base, this big path over the side here means that the dragons can stay quite condensed together. You can use your spells effectively over them. And here they come from the north, guys. They're going to follow that path of defenses. The queen continuing to do a lot of work in the center here because he has them golems protecting. She's going to take out quite a few other of these defenses, even get through the wall, hopefully get down to that wizard tower as well and take that out so it doesn't do too much splash damage when the um, dragons are so close together. But flipping back across to the dragons then, you can see how nicely that worked, just creating that path where the dragons can move nicely through the defenses here. They're not kind of all spread out. They're not, you know, moving back and forth from defenses. They literally, you know exactly where they're going to go. And that is the key to using dragons, guys. You need to be able to predict their pathing. You need to be able to carve an area of the base where you can then control the dragons exactly where you want them to. If any of you guys missed my Town Hall 10 dragon attack video, I'll link it in the top right of this one now, but that was all about controlling the dragons onto the Inferno Towers. You can see on this one, they're continuing to move right the way around the base. The queen is going to fizzle out towards the end and the dragons just have one air defense left, but you can see that goat man held on to that heal spell. Didn't want to use it on the queen alone, when he has such a big pack of dragons here and they're obviously taking out this base quite um, effectively as a team once they get towards that area where they might start taking a little bit of damage where that air defense is that's clearly where the heal spell will be used and it's just a very nice attack how you have to really take out areas of the base in order to set up the dragons we do have another dragon attack coming up at town hall 9 from reddit but let's move, move back across to another forum attack so the first forum Town Hall 9 attack comes from Axe. Again, another six pack attacker in this war. And I really like this one just because he doesn't bring any kill squad. It's a little bit different in terms of Lava Loon. There are Teslas in the corner, which you can see he's just using a couple of balloons to take that straight out. But then he's just going to use the Lava Loon portion. A lot of the base is going to be protected. So on that point, we can just push the balloon straight in. So as the Lava Hounds come across this top area, that's a little bit of an area where you would obviously want to try and boost your balloon. So you can see heels, um, Rage spells, sorry, coming in on kind of the different quadrants of this base. So he has four spells at Town Hall 9, and you can see that as they get over to the middle, the Rage spells cover most of that ground. And before you know it, them defenses are down as they come across to the back end of the base here. Wizard Towers, guys, Lava Loon attacks, that is what you need to be looking out for towards the end of the raid because that is where your balloons will clump together. So you can see uses the rage spell to very nicely take out the last few defenses, but also power the balloons over the top of that wizard tower. And the base is gone. How amazing was that, guys? Just push that lava loon in. No kill squad. Used the spells very, very effectively, and it just took down the defenses so quickly. And then from that point, it's just a case of cleaning up. So you have the lava pups. You obviously... You know, if you have any of your heroes survive, you have them for cleanup. Notice how he kept that balloon as well. That's often very impressive and very helpful to do just to help with that cleanup. Now we've just seen Axe attacking, now we're going to see his base getting taken down by the beast of Team Reddit. Starting out here with a Queen Walk, just to take out some of the key objectives for the Hog Rider attack. Now he does have the healers here. One thing you want to try and do is maximize the troops that you're taking in your clan castle. So he takes Hog Riders in this one, obviously very helpful to have them level 7 Hog Riders. What you can do is also take the level 5 healers in your clan castle as a town hall man. That's if you're not taking bowlers or anything like that. Just something to bear in mind, guys. But we're missing the attack. 
We did have a Hog Rider in at the very north there. That is Lured the Clan Castle. Very nicely going to pull that out of the way because the Hog Riders, they are the objectives you want down, guys. You don't want the CC in there, especially not a Dragon and Balloons. They could wreck the Hog Riders and that Queen is important to get down as well. So this Queen Charge, or Queen Walk rather, we're not really coming into the base, has worked out very nicely to take that down. The King with just a couple of Wizards, he has massive amounts of health, the King. So a couple of Wizards can be very helpful for you. And we're carving out a section of the base here as well. Now what that does, look at them beautiful level 7 hog riders. What that does is allows you to control the pathing of your hog riders. So the beast bringing them in from a few separate angles here. You know, not too surgical, but just controlling them that little bit easier. And it means that since we've taken out the southern, it was very unfortunate not to get this Tesla. Because it means the hog riders are going to have to come right the way down to the south. But the majority of the work is done, guys. You can use the heal spells really effectively over the massive group of hogs. Whereas if they're zigzagging all around the base, you know, it's not as easy to, to really use them spells effectively. The beast, though, in this one coming out with the three-star attack, you can see, controlled them hog riders very nicely through the base once he'd taken out them key objectives as well. Has plenty of them left over for cleanup and even the hog rider healer combination until they went down exactly when I went to zoom in there but another very impressive Town Hall 9 three star. So we do have quite a few Town Hall 9 attacks to show you again, just flipping backwards and forwards between Fauna and Redems. How, how are you feeling so far, guys? Who do you think has the upper hand? Will Forums have the 2-0 lead and take it to 3-0 with that confidence, or will Reddit pull their own back? From Hog Riders to Witches, we are back with Team Forums for another one of their Town Hall 9 attacks. This one by Immortal, and he certainly does have some Immortal Witches. So this base is beautiful. Other than this Wizard Tower, right at the start here where the Golem is going to tank very nicely, a lot of the splash damage you can see is right in the center of the base. That means that the Witches around the outside are going to do a very nice job just taking down the point defense right on the outside and it means that your main kill squad the ones coming through the the middle here the boars and your heroes are going to be able to get into the core and take that main area of defenses down he does have a couple of golems as well to help so as this one moves forward you can see the golems on the outside just help to tank them initial defenses as the the witches come around the outside the bowlers actually tend to go on the outside there they didn't want to go through the middle for some reason they thought the heroes had it they had enough power in the middle, which they actually do. So the ballers come around the outside, start helping with the witches. And as long as you get the bulk, we said this in an earlier attack, as long as you get the bulk of the defenses in the middle, if you leave this last line of defenses, it's not the end of the world, guys, because you, your troops are coming around the outside. They're going to get to that. It's You don't want them to go back into the middle. That's where you, you have to have got them defenses down. So the kill squad was efficient enough in the middle to get that job done still have a couple of bowlers and witches moving around the outside again the splash damage just wasn't there to take them witches down and it's going to be a very impressive and quite a steady three star attack here using the witches we'll move back across to reddit though just a couple more town hall nine attacks before we move to some dip attacks and some 10 v 11. I might be a little bit biased. I do like the dragon attacks, guys. So this is another Town Hall 9 dragon attack by none other than Dragonborn. But I just really like how he takes advantage of this base. So the air defense up in the north. We have two air defense pushed to the north, two to the south. This is really a base to try and defend against Lava Loon. Just having your air defense skewed off the base. The wizard towers kind of clumped together in the middle there. But Dragonborn takes advantage of that. So a Zap Quake combination takes out the air defense at the top. The King and Queen are going to come into this most southern air defense. Then they're going to continue around the base. Just take out a couple of the arch towers as well. Dragons coming in from the left hand side. And then we have a Lava Hound in the CC to just perfect timing. Get across to that air defense. Just tank it before the dragons got within range. Took out a couple of air bombs as well. And then balloons with a haste spell go right onto that air defense. Get it down for the dragons. Now we do have the enemy archer queen right in the middle. It's not as it's not as critical to take her down as if it was a lava loon attack where you really need a plan. Whether that be you know the skeleton spell or to take her out easier. Obviously, if she's in the center of the base, it would probably be kind of a queen pop strategy. 
Um, but the dragons, they can lock on to the queen and take her down in no time. So we have a couple of balloons just locking on to them, point defense on the outside, also taking out a couple of the air bombs as well, helping to protect them dragons. They do split up a little bit towards the end here. You will see how worthwhile it is to take some balloons. Just look at how they're moving through, taking out some of the defenses as the dragons are tanking, and then they switch roles as well. So the balloons then tank for the dragons. Now, since the balloons go right under them defenses, it can often be a good idea, especially if there's a couple on the outside, whether that be an archer tower or something like that, just to drop them balloons onto. In this case, though, they just kind of tank for the dragons and coming to the end of the raid here still has plenty of them up in order to wrap up the rest of these buildings and secure the three-star attack for Team Reddit. Okay, so one more Town Hall 9 attack before we move to some dip attacks and 10v11. Very impressive stuff. Then we will move back to one final Town Hall 9 attack each before we wrap up this war recap and find out who was victorious. So starting out here, we have a couple of golems here from Hunter coming forward with the Goho style attack just to get in, really carve an area of the base, get some objectives down before the hog riders come in. Now there's lots of gaps here around the wizard towers, around the expos, so we're just going to eliminate some of the unpredictability of this base. Golems, once that funnel is created, you really have to have the funnel created very well for your bowlers they can have a tendency to walk just because of the AI of them. But on this one, we got that funnel very nicely created. King, Queen, Bowlers all pushing forward. Going to take out the x -bomb. One of the wizard towers there just removes some of the unpredictability, but also, again, narrow the path of the Hog Riders. And it just means when they come in, we have two heal spells starting out at the north, and then they're just going to spread right the way around the base here, and you can just control the heal spells. The Hog Riders aren't going to, you know, spread out across the base. You can see exactly we have that semicircle of defenses. Obviously, heal spells very, very helpful in them areas where there could be giant bombs. So you can see as they move forward to the, these areas where there's big gaps, where there's the wizard towers, that's where we really need the heal spells. So as they come forward, the Hog Riders just continuing to be reinforced, take down them defences. We brought another section in over on the east there, should have probably zoomed in and showed you that, just to control the pathing of the Hog Riders that were already in the base. Works very nicely, means that you can control them from one defence to the other, kind of what I was explaining in terms of the dragons earlier. And in the end, they take out each and every one of the defences, and we still have wizards moving around the outside of the base to help with cleanup. Still have that queen ability as well. Let's move on then to some Town Hall 11 versus Town Hall 10 attacks, and Town Hall 10 versus Town Hall 11. Some very impressive stuff here, guys. I'm a fan of the dragons, okay? I admit it. I, I you know, I like the dragons. Here we have, though, a very nice attack by Nez. And this is just beautiful. I mean, you've really got to appreciate the, the, you know, the advances that Town Hall 11 has get, got in the previous updates. It's become so much harder for them Town Hall 10s in order to get the two-star. But just watch what Nez does here. So he has a couple of cleanup troops or kind of free snipes up at the top there. Then uses the king and queen sacrificially in order to create the funnel here. So the king doing a brilliant job tanking as the queen walks forward and snipes a couple of them defenses. But what she's aiming for, as you can see, is the air defense there. She, she takes one of them down. Then we're using the zap quake combination down to the bottom. Now look at the funnel here. We have an, a section of the base on this right hand side that has been taken out. Where do we bring the dragons? This is perfect. So he brings them, just checks first there for any air bombs, anything like that then brings the dragons in from the north. Now check their, check their pathing. You wouldn't want to bring them in from the west here, guys. If you did that, they'd be prone to kind of spread out across the base. From the north, they're going to move directly down the base. Some of them are going to start spreading out, but that's good. It's going to help us get the 50%. But the ones that spread out down to the right-hand side here, they can't spread out too far because there's no buildings there. The queen is just taking them down, so they have to go to the town hall to get that two star very nice just clutches it the 50 percent but guys is a town hall 10 v 11 that is all that is required so brilliant attack nez absolutely loved it to be honest i know i was on team forums but it is just good fun very nice attack 
Whatever they can do, we can do better. Galaxy Liver here coming forward for Team Forums with the Dragons as well in order to smash a Town Hall 11 base. I actually ran a very similar base to this, so we were able to give him some friendly challenges as well, just to kind of prep. But things were different, the layout and whatnot, so he, you know, he only had a little bit of advice there and kind of general idea of the strategy, but just check out how he carves out a path in this base. So a couple of minions going to be able to get some snipes there again, very similar to that last attack you saw. When it's 10v11, Every single building counts, guys. That 50% is surprisingly difficult to get when you're creating that funnel and getting, you know, a good enough army into the middle there. That Zap Quake combination, again, seeing an appearance in this attack, the Earthquake finishing off the air defense to the north. Now what are we going to do for the dragons? Well, very similar. King and Queen coming in. They're going to create the funnel. Comes at this a little bit different to the, the, um, the last attack, but the principles are the same really so very nice to sneak in a baby dragon next to the heroes it's something that sounds very simple but it, 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 a lot of people overlook it something that it's just a great technique because you get that enraged bonus they take out buildings very quickly and there's nothing shooting at them because the king and queen are tanking so always remember that guys once the funnel is created here that is enough fantastic stuff the queen getting that arch tower you can see how the funnel's created just wants to wait though very patient you know you, you don't have to worry about time with 10 v 11 really very patient here lets the dragon whilst it's free take out a couple more of the buildings and just create that funnel a little bit more and then you can see exactly where he's coming from going to move right the way through the defenses there has a couple of spells as well but check out all of the defenses i love the addition of that lava hound and balloons just to help get in there over the top of the defenses going to be tanked by the dragons and really take that area down quickly not only does it help to protect the dragons it helps with that funnel guys they move forward towards the air defense the freeze spell very nice onto the inferno tower but even better gets the air sweeper which would have been devastating for them dragons pushing them back over so guys do not forget that you know town hall 10 v 11 dragons is certainly working it's a great strategy but do not overlook them air sweepers let's move to a couple of dip attacks before we wrap up this recap so we're going to show the base number 8 for each of these dip attacks. Now, surprisingly difficult, you know, the dip attacks, they're not a, you know, you can't just steamroll over a base. You still need strategy. You still need to plan effectively in order to get that three stars. And these guys do a brilliant job. Ron Mexico here, massive thank you for helping us out on our 50v50 Town Hall 11 war back over at Sack Kings Elite. Thank you very much, Ron Mexico, on a side note there. But he's coming forward here with the balloons mainly to take down Smallson, one of our forum moderators who was live there at Finland as well whilst this all went down. So as he comes forward here, just using the King, Queen and the Grand Warden and a little bit of a kill squad of the ballers there in order to carve out a bit of an area, going to mean that he can target them balloons a little bit easier and he takes out the CC as well, which is always something that you need to be able to do. Depends what's in there really, but you know, the CC, it's, it's 101 stuff, isn't it, guys? You need to be looking at taking out the CC. Missing the point here, though, King has, you know, kind of gone on a bit of a sidewalk here, taking out some of the trash buildings. Queen and Grand Warden, though, do fantastic. They've taken out an Inferno Tower, and they're even in there taking out some of the air defense as well. But it doesn't matter. We can pin the Lava Hounds onto the air defense. So from the top here, Lava Hound comes in and... It, standard stuff for the lava loon style attacks you want the balloons to stick behind the lava hounds quite quickly that's where the haze spells are very effective you don't need rage spells really the balloons are powerful enough you don't need that just missing out the air sweeper with that um free spell but for this one the inferno tower is actually what you want more than the air sweeper when you have so many balloons because the balloons were going to get that air sweeper they were going to get through whereas if we could get that inferno tower down that was the important thing guys and as you can see base is crushed really isn't it very nice attack it's it's all about spell placement i'm i'm personally not a very good lava loon attacker i just haven't quite got the coordination down maybe we'll you know 
do that together with my subscribers. I'll try and make videos on actually improving myself with that attack. Maybe Ron can give me some tips here as well. But it's, it's more, you saw there, really using the haste spells to help keep the balloons protected behind the lava hounds. And then the inferno towers is where you want to really use them other spells effectively. So the heal spell, very nicely used once that inferno tower went down. Let's go to one more dip attack, then we'll wrap up with two town hall nine attacks and we'll find out who actually won. So the final town hall 11 attack is by you, but it's not you, it's him. But him is you, he's you. That's, yeah, this is you anyway, guys. He's gonna crush this base. He's using the Ball of Witch strategy. Now, that's very effective as them kind of dip attacks. Should have mentioned there with Ron Mexico's attack, we actually have two Town Hall 10.5. So you can see here we have the Grand Warden, but other than that, it is a Town Hall 10 base, really, but still impressive to get them dip attacks. Again, guys, they're not just a walk in the park. You do have to really, you know, think about what you're doing, really. So a Queen Walk coming in very nicely here. Again, the Baby Dragons, brilliant for funneling, especially if you've got something tanking as well. They really do a lot of damage with that enraged bonus. What's going to happen here is it's just going to allow the Queen to be funneled exactly where we want her to go so enemy queen is down enemy grand warden is down enemy king is going down we've brought in the grand warden as well because the queen's ability although we still have that we use the grand warden's ability to save the queen now she's going to continue to walk around the base here then he's going to come forward with the ball of witch attack now again at town hall 10 the inferno towers are the target so whether you come in and take that out beforehand or whether you target that with your ball of witch they are the main targets so a couple of ballers on the outside here is going to create the funnel even further so we use the baby dragons to create the funnel at the top then we have ballers at the bottom here then we have that main army here comes the witches and the ballers and you can see that he's targeting the inferno tower so the jump spell going to easily get onto that first inferno tower the other one right out the back door that's why we have a second jump spell. First off though, not going to put that jump spell in too early, just going to allow himself to take out the CC before that one comes in. And a very nice freeze spell gets the Inferno Tower, but also the Cannon and Archer Tower. Plenty of troops going to flood in there and take that out. And then the Ballers, just look at how effective they are, guys. They really get that bounce onto the buildings behind. And there, the Rage spell, you can see that is where the Ballers really come forward, guys. If you have that Rage spell in there as well, they will be crushing defenses. Even has lots of them on the back end there to help with cleanup. But it's not just cleanup. He, he's, again, controlling the Ballers in, in the middle. So instead of the Ballers now having to come on the outside in order to take them out, they can be redirected along with the Queen to the Teslas at the bottom. So quite a smart move there. Very subtle, but very smart in order to get that Town Hall 11 versus 10.5 three-star attack. So what do you think, guys? Very impressive attacks either side. And it was throughout the entire war. We have two attacks left before we find out the result. So we have Echo attacking my good friend Superfinch, who is in Finland. I've got quite a few friends in this video, haven't I, guys? But I've obviously had the, the privilege as well of going to Finland and actually meeting quite a few of these guys. It's just fantastic to meet other passionate clashers that, you know, share your passion for something of the game. And, you know, Clash of Clans has created so much more for us within the community. I've, I've made real friends in real life through this game that I've met through Clash of Clans. But anyway, guys, again, sidetracking there. Super Finch trying to go on the defense here. Not quite gonna happen with his Town Hall 9 attack. We have another Hog Rider attack. And again, you can, you can see exactly what's happening. Queen is down. CC is getting pulled, carving an area of the base. Yes, we've left the Wizard Towers, but it's really picking and choosing your battles. You can't take everything, guys. You have to just pick where is most appropriate. And getting the Queen and CC is more appropriate, especially if you have scout attacks. We now have four heal spells for the Hog Riders. That's more than enough along with the Wizard Towers. We can just use them, not even sparingly, we can just blast them in. The Hog Riders are going to be well protected here as they come forward, the first healers in, and then as they move through, it's just a case of continuing to put the heal spells down. Very unfortunate that these air defense didn't go down because it does pull a couple of hog riders. But in the end, that actually works out quite nicely because as you can see, 
the cannon at the bottom here does start to get tanked by the hog riders and they kind of just merge back into the pact and then we have a couple of other hog riders coming forward as well really it was just a very nice attack did have a hidden tesla in the corner there super Vinge, but we did have a couple of hog riders there which took that down as well the fourth heal spell not even needed but just shown how impressive this attack was taking out super Vinge for the three star but don't worry buddy don't you worry we're gonna feature one of super Vinge's attacks here saving the best till last for the final attack of this recap let's get into it guys here we are then, Super Finch on his Town Hall 9 account. Super Finch! Super Finch! Oh, I had to do it, mate. I had to do it. So Super Finch, he was in there in Finland as well, absolutely clutching it for us in Team Forums. He he was actually on his Town Hall 11 account the last event. You might have seen his attack. Had a very nice Hog Rider dip attack, but into this one, again, it's very similar to that last attack. We're getting a nice wide funnel. Check this out. Golems and Wizards right the way around. Once the heroes and the bowlers come forward, I mean, they're not going to be drawn up to this dark barracks up here. They're going to go right into the middle, exactly where he wants them to go. Check out what they're going to get. The enemy queen is there. She's going to go down. The enemy CC is going to be pulled. Had that poison spell in there ready for them. And check out next to these in, um, expos. There's a massive gap. That is, you know, prime area for giant bombs. So if we can trigger them... It's just something else that we don't have to worry about with the Hog Riders. Again, you have to pick and choose your battles where you're going to come in from. You can't take everything. But we've narrowed the path for the Hog Riders. And we've also... You know exactly where they're going to go. We've mentioned it, guys. Check it out. You can see that the Hog Riders are going to just move right the way around the side of the base here. Using the heal spells effectively where the giant bombs are. Where there's any kind of prone areas using the skeleton spell very effectively there in front of where the skeleton spell was not the skeleton spell but the skeletons the skeleton trap where they were going to run and follow the hog riders right into that skeleton spell really this is the this needs to be the last attack right into that poison spell putting it in front of the skeletons not on top of them just take note of that guys something that you know you might not think of but you don't need the skeletons down in a rush you just need them down Onto the cleanup attack though, you know, Queen still has the ability, Bowler's moving around the outside, plenty of Hog Riders. Mate, you absolutely smashed it. Very nice attack there by Super Finch. So that wraps up all of the attacks. I hope you enjoyed them guys. Make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe. But here we are. Who won then? Who actually won? Did Team Forums make it 3-0 or did Team Reddit come back and get their revenge here we are guys moving across to the board you can see that team reddit massive congratulations they did indeed pull out the victory moving to the war results here you can see lots of stars ahead they really you know they came out all guns blazing the town hall nines did a very nice job cleaning up and really the town hall tens cleared our 11s quite effectively whereas we really struggled a bit more on their town hall 11s but you know a massive massive thank you to everyone being in team forums i know the work that went behind this you know with our war generals and things they did a fantastic job i mean i didn't help out very much my attacks weren't very good either but you know it's all in good fun massive congratulations to team reddit they you know they've pulled it back it's 2-1 we'll have to make it 3-1 in the next one guys but i hope you enjoyed that one let me know down in the comments which was your favorite attack and did your favorite team win that is the question, guys. That wraps it up. I've been your host, Juno Sloth, and until next time, peace out, guys.